in today's video we are going to go through the pcb design for this circuit so obviously if you remember from the last video we used a tda 2030 to build an audio amplifier circuit and we are basically trying to improve the design that was done by someone on reddit so please refer back to the older video if you want to go through the schematic in today's video we'll be finishing off the pcb design and we'll basically end up with the result you see on the screen now I'm using all through hole parts for this design because the TDA2030 is a through hole component. I think the only thing that would probably need changing is this RV1, which obviously you can see I've got it on as a header, but you might want that as a potential meter or something like that, just so that you've got control over the analog volume. But this connector will allow you to have your potential meter off the board if you wanted to do that for some reason. So let's get into the PCB design and I'll show you some tips and tricks along the way. Now, if you wanted to build this PCB by yourself, I would highly recommend PCBWay, who can manufacture, assemble your PCBs for a very reasonable cost and to a very high quality. PCBWay also provide other services such as 3D printing and things like that. But one of the things I really like about them is the community that they have where, where you can share your projects with other people and other people can share their projects with you. So if I was to show you an example of that, you can see that some people have shared their robot projects that they've done in the past. And obviously you can download this and order this PCB yourself if you wanted to. So check out PCBWay if you want to order the PCB we're designing today or if you want to design your own PCBs. Now back to the video. Let's have a quick look at what they've done on the PCB design. You can see the main component is off to the side. I think we should centralize that a little bit more. And one of the things we need to remember is that this component will need a heat sink, most likely, especially if you're going to turn up the volume. So if we keep it near the board edge, then we can get some heat sinks onto it, basically keep it more open. Then there are the, um, basically, well, this is one of the inputs and this is another input. So I think this is for the speaker. This is obviously the audio input and the power supply. And now there's some very thin tracks going. From here, I'm not entirely sure what pin 2 is, but we can check that on our schematic. So pin 2 is this, so that's not a high current path, so that should be okay. Then the pin 1 is basically this one, so that's fine too. They have made an attempt to make pin 4, which is the output thicker, so that's, so that's really good. And the VCC line is also thicker, which is really good as well. Now you can see VCC from here is connected to this capacitor on this side and that track is um, thicker as well. I'm not entirely sure what the size of that track is, but I think it looks um, thick enough. If we go into our iCAD software, you, you can go into calculator tools and basically go to track width. I'm going to put down the current as 3. Just looking at the TDA component, we know that this produces 14 watts. And the power supply with the maximum of 6 to 18, I guess. Um, so we let's say we use a 12 volt power supply with 14 watts. So if I go into Excel, V equals VI, then our power is 14 watts. Our voltage is, let's say, 12. Then we can do P divided by V, and that gives us 1.16 amps. Now, I'm not sure if that's the output power. Um, or the yeah so that is the output power and obviously class a b amplifiers are not the most efficient things so we need to account for that as well so i'm just going to call it two amps and basically that's safe so we can go something like two or three 2.5 amps as a safe allowable temperature rise i'm going to put 10 and then the conductor length as you can see is not having a huge effect on the track width so the trace width i need is one mil basically and that's for one ounce copper so all my power tracks with the two amp symbol that we put over here, so all these thicker tracks, they need at least one mil track. Now I can go into my PCB editor, pull in my components from the other side, and I'm gonna make this central to the PCB, or let's define some sort of a board edge at the moment. So let's go from edge cuts. I like to start from 100, just makes the mats a little bit easier. I'm going to go 150, 150 for now, and then we can change that later if we need to. So like I said, I'm going to put this in the middle, and the center is 125. 
what I'm going to do is basically have my inputs on one side and my outputs on the other side. Now they did have a screw terminal, so I'm just going to make this a little bit larger over here. I'm going to get rid of the F fab layer for now, just so that the circuit's neater to look at. I'm going to open up my schematic on this side. And what I'm going to do is start with this component here and start putting components from this side. So you can see on the schematic, RV1 is next to that. So I'll go put that in. Then I have C2. And after C2, it goes to R6, which also goes to pin 1 on the, on the amplifier chip. R6 goes to R1 and R2. And C7 is in parallel with R1. So that's on this side over here. R3 is quite close to this part. So from pin 1, then we have C1 going from that part to ground. We have R4, which goes from pin 4 to pin 1. So I can turn this around if I need to. I have R2, which connects to R6 and pin 1. Sorry, just R6 and VCC. I want to keep C3 and C4 very close to the IC if I can. So you can see C3 is a fairly large component. So basically what I'm going to do is try to keep that in the same line. And C6 is going to be our output. So it might be a good idea to keep that central. R5 and C5, which is basically connected to R5. And we have C4 which is in parallel with this component. So what I like to do is keep the smaller component closer and the larger component in terms of the capacitive value further away. And then we have our protection diodes, which go from pin four out to ground and VCC. So pin four is connected to this large capacitor here. So maybe we can have that over here in the middle somewhere. So now this is just the initial placement of the components roughly in the right place. Most of them will move around as I try to do the track layout. Um, one of the things I wanted to show you is basically the um, nets. You can see I have a two amp net, which we created on the other side. Now what I can do with this two amp net is make it a different color. So you can see all the, um, the rat nets that all the rat nests that go um, for VCC and the high current path basically are much larger. And one of the things we can do on this side is go to the board setup and we can do net classes and we have the 2A net class from the other side over here. And we want to set that net class up to one mil, which is what we got from our calculation. And if you do this over here, you can see that this track now is thicker. Basically what we need in terms of the current carrying capacity. So I can try to route this. Um, it might not be the best form placement for now, but we'll see um, as I do the route a little bit more. So one of the things introduced with KiCad 8, I think, is you can look at the track lengths by going on this over here or pressing the 7 key on your keyboard. And you can see this track is 50 millimeters as a 50 mil track with one mil thickness should be fine.
So that is basically the PCB design done for this. Obviously I could have made it a bit more compact, but I do want to spend a little bit too much time on it um, as I am short on time. There could be some better routing options, I think. I think that one of the things I'm concerned about is the position of this RV1. I know the Redditor had it at the bottom of the schematic, but I think they are using headers, so I'm not sure what component is going in there. In terms of everything else, I think it looks pretty good. Um, this should be on the top layer, not on the bottom layer, if you want to keep it to one layer. <clears throat> you can see all the grounds are connected. And I've tried to take one mil grounds everywhere so that I know there's a minimum track width of at least one mil going to all the little components. So I can start deleting things like this and you can see that it's one mil. I'm not going to delete that one and that one because I don't want that to get deleted accidentally just in case I move something at a later date. So we managed to get everything onto the one side. I mean, if we use two double-sided board, we could probably get a much better layout. I don't think we need to. Um, something like this, you know, we can build up on a Vera board or a strip board or something like that, which would be really good. Um, I think if you want to do that, you might want to stick to like a 2.54 mil grid so that, you know, you got a layout here and then you just try to replicate that layout on a Vera board. So overall, um, this looks pretty good. And finally, let's look at the 3D viewer. Got your big 2200 microfarad capacitor over here. Got your protection diodes, got your resistors, got the other capacitors sprinkled around the board. I guess the bits I'm worried about is these two connectors because I wasn't too sure where they where they needed. Obviously, if you had a fixed location for these connectors, then that's what we would design around. The IC is over here. So if you wanted to put a heat sink on this, you can. These capacitors over here, they're the right pitch, but they're the wrong design because the capacitor is actually a square block rather than the round thing. But the pitch is fine, so that should be okay as well. But yeah, this is the final design. And I will upload this to GitHub and put a link to the GitHub on the video in the video description. So thank you for watching today. Bye for now.